Welcome back. Uh, this is Luke part one, lesson number two, the third video. We're looking at verses 22 through 38. And let me encourage you to continue on in your homework. I know a lot of times schedules get sort of conflicted and things like that, but do the best you can. You know what the best is that you can do, okay? So what we see here is that Mary's days of purification were over. And you looked up some scripture passages in Exodus and Leviticus that show us what that is. After a lady had a baby, there was a 40-day purification period when she could not go into the temple. So that time period is up. They took Jesus to the temple to be presented before the Lord according to the scripture. Remember what I said before that several times, I want to say six times, maybe seven times in this chapter, you see that little phrase, according to the scripture. So they were going to present Jesus before the Lord because he was the firstborn. And the scripture told them that there was to be a sacrifice. And they brought an offering of a couple of birds, which was the offering of the poor people. Now, they were not indigent. It doesn't mean that they were out on the streets. It just means that they were not wealthy. They did not have the resources to give uh, a sacrifice, say, of a lamb. So they brought the birds. While they were doing this, they had an encounter with a gentleman named Simeon. Now, some people think that Simeon was one of the priests there in the temple, but I don't believe he was. We don't have any evidence whatsoever that he was a priest. We do know the description that is given, that he was righteous, that he was devout, that he was looking for the consolation of Israel. Did you know that that's another term, another name for the Lord Jesus Christ? the consolation of Israel. And we see that the Holy Spirit was upon Simeon. Have you been struck by how much the Holy Spirit played roles in chapter 1 and chapter 2? The Holy Spirit is everywhere. You know, so often, particularly out of a lot of our backgrounds, we think the Holy Spirit didn't do much of anything to the day of Pentecost then thereafter. And that's not true at all. The Holy Spirit was upon Simeon. And the Holy Spirit had told Simeon that he would not die until he saw the Lord's Christ. Now, you know, when you did your markings, you know, in, in the homework, we're told to go mark certain words and things. Sometimes you encounter words, you're not sure how to mark them. Lord is one of them. Do I mark Lord like his Father or Lord Jesus Christ or how? When you mark this right here, you're marking along, and all of a sudden it says the Lord's Christ. Well, then you realize, wait a minute, that means Lord's Father Christ is the Lord Jesus Christ. Just a little hint there, right? On this particular day, the Holy Spirit led Simeon into the temple. And while he was in the temple, he came in and he finds the baby Jesus Christ. We're not told if he was expecting a baby or a child or an adult or what. The Spirit led him to Jesus. And then you learn all these things about the Lord Jesus Christ by what uh, Simeon spoke over him, what he prophesied over him. He spoke <clears throat> to the baby about the baby what the general people all around could hear. And then he spoke particularly to Mary. And we find out that Jesus is God's salvation, that he's a light of revelation to the Gentiles. That he's the glory of God's uh, people, the people of Israel. And that he's appointed, this little baby's appointed for some things. The fall of and rise of many in Israel. The rise would be those that would believe in him as Messiah. The fall would come upon those that did not believe. That he's the sign to be opposed. Even to this day we see the opposition against Christianity, against Christ. It reveals the hearts. And then he looks at Mary and he told Mary that her soul would literally be pierced by a sword because of this little one. Toward the end of this conversation, this proclamation right here with Simeon, Anna comes up. And Anna's a prophetess. Well, you know what a prophetess does? They prophesy. She would speak forth the truth. We see that at the bottom of the page right here. She spoke of him to all of waiting for Jerusalem's redemption. She was telling everybody around, this is the one. We've been waiting for redemption. This little child is the one. She was aged. The scripture tells us that she was old. Depends upon the translation. If you read the New American Standard, it says that she's 84 years old. I don't think that's quite right as far as the translation. I believe the Greek the understanding is better like this, that she was married. And then she was married for seven years, and then her husband died, and she'd been a widow for 84 years. So let's say she's 14 when she got married. Then she's 21 when she becomes a widow. She's a widow 84 years. She'd be 105. 84 is old, but it's not that old in the Scripture. And the way it's described, I think she was probably 105. It doesn't matter because what she did was she lived in the temple. She served night, day, fasted, and prayed. She never left the temple. She was interceding before God. And at that very hour, when Simeon was speaking, when the family was there, she comes up, and what does she do? What all these folks did initially, they thanked God for what the Lord had promised for the salvation that was before them. We should do likewise.